And that brings us to the sordid tale of the Kern Water Bank. We're going to learn how banks serve us. Now, there are all sorts of banks. Banks for your money, blood banks, even sperm banks. In Bakersfield, there is a water bank. The water bank holds water in an underground aquifer. When it is needed, it is dispensed to the bank's members. This ContraCostaTimes.com website video shows the basic system in action. What we're doing is we're returning water back to our participants. So the water can go either way. Okay. Right now, all our wells are pumping. This is where the, the flow is metered, and this is hooked into a fiber optic system that goes up and down the whole California aqueduct, uh -huh. which goes to uh, central facilities uh -huh. for the Department of Water Resources. The Kern Water Bank started as a project of the State Department of Water Resources. It was built to hold water underground until needed. The state invested a total of $74 million to develop the Kern Water Bank. But it could never get the groundwater storage part of the project going, partly because of a state law that requires the Department of Water Resources to receive local approval for groundwater projects, approval that Kern County would not grant. So the state walked away from the project and arranged for the ownership to be transferred from the state to the Kern County Water Agency in exchange for Kern County giving up a small portion of their claim to water. The agency then turned the bank over to what was called a joint powers authority, made up of a handful of water districts, and a private company, the Westside Mutual Water Company, which has a 48% stake. Another 10% is owned by Dudley Ridge Water District, and guess whose name pops up again? Stuart Resnick, whose Paramount Farms owns more than 40% of the district's irrigated acreage. The state had purchased this 20,000 acre alluvial fan from Tenneco Oil Company. They were going to use it to store water that came in wet years. It, it would have benefited everyone, not just a few. The state turned over this public asset to the Kern County Water Agency in exchange for the Kern County Water Agency retiring 45,000 acre feet. And that's all paper water. Paper water. Now there's an interesting invention. Paper water is just that. You can't drink it, you can't swim in it, you can't irrigate crops with it, but you can pretend that it is real. To understand the importance of paper water, you need to imagine the efforts that developers must go through to get a project approved by local government agencies. They have to ensure that when their building project is finished, it will have adequate water supplies. Usually, a developer actually can document access to real water, but sometimes that water is water in theory, meaning that on paper, the developer makes a promise to ensure that there is water, when in reality, that water may not actually exist. And worse, even if there is real water, that water could be interrupted, meaning that in the event of dry cycles, the water that had been pouring from the tap can suddenly stop flowing. It is a very profitable situation for developers, but it is a ticking time bomb for business and homeowners who have every reason to expect that their property will have ongoing water supplies. Greed is not in the best interests of the public, and it certainly is not in the best interests of salmon and our fragile ecosystem. State laws allow for joint powers to grant state water contractors the power to build projects, to acquire water and water rights. The phrase, acquire water, can mean two things. One way to acquire water is to build things, like dams to capture the fresh water of rivers, desalination plants to render ocean, sea, or discharge water usable, and reservoirs and underground water banks to store captured water. It can also acquire water by turning it into a marketable commodity and buying it from another source that has already secured the rights and captured the water. That is happening now. 
Consider the case of an Arizona developer building a major housing development in the San Francisco Bay Area town of Redwood City. It's called the Salt Works Project. Two million commuters drive into San Francisco and San Mateo counties every week, congesting our freeways and bridges and polluting our air. This 1,400-acre industrial site offers commuters a local place to live. This is a deal between a longtime Kern County Family Farming Collective and the developer to secure water for the Bay Area development. It involves the lease of water for 35 years, with provisions for another 35-year extension. The water involved is from the Sacramento-San Joaquin River Delta, acquired from the Kern County Water Agency. Marketing water, the selling of the public trust resource for private profit, may be good for a few individuals and corporations, but it's bad for California's decimated salmon populations. In the Salmon Water Now video, The Water Pirates, we documented how water transfers are becoming more common because water is more valuable than the crops in the ground. And there is a thriving legal subculture that is busy teaching water rights holders how to profit from their assets. Take a look at this brochure for a seminar on how to profit from selling water and how to avoid any legal or ethical entanglements. Here's another example, a lawyer specializing in helping water rights holders profit from private sales, taking on Salmon Water Now videos. It seems as though we may have hit a nerve. They're getting that water at a subsidized rate for an intended use to, to put it to use um, to farm and, and for them to sell it for a profit is absurd. How should somebody be able to make a buck off of something that the general taxpayer has, has invested in to receive a general benefit from and have these things sold for a profit? It used to be they wanted to make it easy for you to market surplus water. And there was a very good reason if some farmers had extra water, they should be able to supply their neighbors with cheap ag water. But now the profit motive in the sale of the water itself has become a problem. So-called farmers will be selling their water rights for tens of millions of dollars, selling the public's water, which they purchase at below market prices, and reselling that water at five to 10 times what they paid for it. The paradox about the very wealthy who benefit the most from these transfers of taxpayer-funded water, these are the people, in fact, who have the power to stop the kind of changes that are going on, but the the wealth that they can get from it blinds them to the actual effects. And that brings us back to the Kern Water Agency, the Kern Water Bank, and Stuart Resnick, and a push to change the rules of the game. 